Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and I am a mum to Rose. Ooh. I actually recorded this video already when the sun was shining, I was in such a good mood. Then I came to edit the video and it's not got any sound. That is the worst, like when that happens, that's so, so annoying. So I hope the lighting's not too bad. Actually, that's so much better. The lighting's, the sun is just about to go down. So I was trying to record before the sun went down and I was so, so happy that I could record in natural light. <laughs> Anyways, today's video is going to be about periods. So welcome to my channel again. My name is Chelsea. I'm a mum to Rose, who is two and a half, and I make content around motherhood, how I'm finding the journey. I also am going to start vlogging again, so subscribe if you want to see what I'm going to be doing in those vlogs. So as I said, and by the title, if you're here, this video is about periods. So for a bit of context, I'm 29, I've had one child, I do not have PCOS, endometriosis, or fibroids, or any other fertility, or uh, what do we call it, any reproductive health conditions. And obviously that's appropriate context given the video because I know that if you've got PCOS, endometriosis, endometriosis, fibroids, all of those things can affect your periods. So I'm just going to start off by saying yes I don't have any of those conditions and I had an internal scan when I was pregnant um, in my early early weeks of pregnancy and I didn't have any fibroids. There was no scarring or anything in any of my reproductive areas. Obviously that could have changed but I'm guessing it hasn't. So I think that's, as I said, appropriate context because obviously the things that I've tried for myself may not work for other people if you've got PCOS or endometriosis or whatever, or fibroids. Uh, I know there's other reproductive health conditions out there, but I don't know about them. So if you want to share down below, then you can do that. Anyways, so I started my period when I was 12 and... I can't recall that long, but what I do recall is into my teenage years, my periods were really painful, really heavy, and the pain was so, so bad that I would vomit every single time I was on my period, especially the first and second days. The first day was always the worst day, and I know loads of people relate to that, like the, per the first day of your period being the worst. So the first day, yeah, it was always really heavy and I've learned now that my body's response to pain is for me to vomit and that's happened in more than one situation. So I'll give a, another example. So when I was in labour, obviously this is like extreme period, I suppose, but when I was in labour, I vomited throughout the whole labour. I didn't have any, I had pethidine right towards the end, which is a strong opioid, but other than that, I didn't have anything and I was just vomiting, vomiting, vomiting. So my body's response to pain is to just vomit, okay? So when I was on my periods, I would vomit all the time. Another example, obviously people will say that's related, like period and labour, obviously labour's like much more intense. Another example of when my body would vomit in reaction to pain was when I was doing athletics. I used to do quite a lot of training <laughs> to a very intense level. And when I got lactic acid, if you don't know what that is, it's just the waste product that the body produces, the muscles produce, when you're not able to get as much oxygen in. So if you like have sprinted down the road and you feel lots of pain, that's what lactic acid is. And the way your body removes it is by you breathing, get more oxygen and it removes that waste product. However, when you're doing training to a very intense level, you build up a lot of lactic acid. And when I built up a lot of lactic acid, I would vomit. So I learned that, yeah, that's my body's response to pain. To be honest, when I was about to go into labor, I never thought I'm gonna be vomiting the whole time. I mean, I was approaching it like, my body is made to do this. I'm gonna be the best. I mean, I was the best. I am a queen. There's nothing more than giving birth that showed me that I am <laughs> so powerful. Anyways, I'm digressing here. So that is my body's response to pain, to vomit. So when my period came around, I would expect to vomit because I was in pain. You know, my period is causing my body pain and my body's like, hey, this is how you like to react to pain, let's vomit. As a result of that, I would always find it really hard to go to work, go to school, like I would be in so much pain. I remember one of my mum's friends saying like, why don't you start her on the contraceptive pill? My mum is a nurse, she was like, no. And I'm so glad that she did not do that because now that I know a lot more about our bodies as women, I feel like that was not the appropriate 
response or that's not the appropriate thing to do and obviously that person was just trying to help I remember like she was waiting for my mum and I somewhere and I was like vomiting and she was like where are you and I was my mum was like yeah she's not feeling great so yeah throughout my teenage years really bad periods um I would say really bad first and second day of my period vomiting intense pain I'd have to take paracetamol like every however every is it two hours no that's wrong <laughs> every four hours whatever because I could not cope with the pain and I was I remember thinking like, how am I gonna give birth if I can't do my period pains? Anyways, so the first and second day were really, really bad. And then the rest of the time was heavy, but you know, not like I could function. Um, and I remember one of my friends saying like, once you have a baby, like it will get better. Obviously we're not gonna have a whole baby just to see if our periods will get better. But for me, it did get better. Also after the first and second day, when I was a teenager, my periods would be quite, as I say, heavy, but not painful. Throughout my teenage years, I did exercise a lot. I did athletics. I was always moving. I was always quite an active person walking to and from school. Walking is a really good form of exercise. So yeah, I would say I was an active teenager. And then into my 20s, the same still continued. What I would say, the pain was still the same. However, my periods were lighter. Now, I realised that the more that I exercised, the lighter my periods would be. And I know that's, there's a there's a lot there because when you exercise and your body loses a certain percentage of fat, you can come close to losing your periods. Now, I didn't come close to losing my periods. I'm just saying my periods got lighter and I kind of correlate, the more I move my body in a month, the less heavy my periods are. I would say they were still painful in my early 20s, but they were less heavy. Moving on to 26, I think I got pregnant at 26, gave birth at 27, yeah, that's right. I got pregnant at 26, gave birth at 27. Obviously, I didn't have periods when I was pregnant. And then I had my first period when my daughter was seven months, I think. Yeah, seven months postpartum was when I had my first period. And it was not painful. I remember my friend saying, like, it will be less painful because I remember complaining to her like oh this period is just killing me like it's disgusting and she said wait when you have babies it's not going to be the same had rose and I was like oh like my period is not painful like compared to the pain that I had before out of 10 it was like eight nine especially on the first day I would rate period after baby probably about three or four like I was like I could feel it but I wasn't vomiting and I had to carry on with my day and I feel like I had a baby so I couldn't be like laying in bed all day like I would do when I didn't have her but as I said it was less painful I was able to carry on and function better then I started doing some reading around periods and how our bodies respond after babies and stuff like that and I realized that there's supplements out there that you can take to help reduce or yeah reduce the pain that you feel on your period so this is not an ad this sounds like some ad that someone does so I researched magnesium and obviously I started this video by saying I don't have any health conditions not just reproductively but I don't have any health conditions in general I'm generally fit and healthy so before you start taking any supplements or whatever obviously you have to consult with your doctor or whoever don't quote me don't say I force you to do this I'm literally just sharing what worked for me in the hopes that someone out might out there might benefit from it so I started taking liquid magnesium it's downstairs but I will put a picture here and I'll also put it down below so you can have a look and read the reviews and for the last two months I've been taking it and I must say I feel zero pain the pain is zero out of ten like I'm on my period now I don't feel any pain the first day it came I didn't even know it was there because well it was a bit early but yeah I didn't know it was there because before when I was starting my period I would know I'd feel nauseous I would be like gagging I know this is a lot I'll be gagging it when I'm brushing my teeth and I vomit like and that's how I knew that my period was looming whereas now zero out of ten I've only been taking it for two months and that's the change that I've seen I haven't done anything else I haven't changed my diet I have been exercising more consistently than I have in the last two years since I had rose but I already know the correlation between exercise and my periods so I think it's the magnesium that has really had an impact on my period pain so do your research I would say that's generally what worked for me two other things which I will say that have been really instrumental which I've already mentioned exercise so I find that the more I exercise in the month the less painful my periods are 
and I do in- exercise to quite an intense level not every single day but I do because it helps my mental health and also I think oh less painful periods or less I would say that exercise doesn't impact on the pain I don't have any pain right now but I've realized that exercise impacts how heavy my period is I'm not sure what the science is behind that or if there's any science behind that you can read up on it on it if you want to but I would say that that's something that I've noticed I'm very in sync with my body like if something's going wrong or I notice a change I'm always trying to research and find out how I can make it better or be more in sync with my body the third thing I would say is food (laughs) now I know we all have specific nutrients that works best for our bodies because we're all different we all have to do different diets not dieting diets and dieting are two different things diet is just what you consume so I would say I have noticed sadly but it's not sadly but it's the truth I've noticed a correlation between how much processed food I eat and how painful and heavy my periods are so I'm not gonna say I don't eat chocolate I don't eat sweets I don't eat crisps like I don't eat chocolate because I'm (laughs) I don't eat dairy but I do eat sweets, I like cakes that are dairy free, ice creams, blah blah blah. But I have noticed, and I know people don't like to hear this, but I'm sorry, I've noticed the less processed junk I eat, the less heavy my periods are, and the less likely I am to get more pain. And in my teenage years, in my early 20s, I was eating sweets and so much junk food for a prolonged period. I would just you know how it is in your 20s especially uni drinking alcohol doing all that can't speak about alcohol and that and the effects on your period because I don't really drink so I don't feel like if I drank one drink I would notice a difference but I would say that I have noticed a difference between how much crap I eat and how heavy my periods are now that I don't have pain I can't say that junk food affects my pain levels it's more so junk food affects how heavy my period is so take with that what you will do with that information what you want to do with it and yeah that is how I've been able to get less painful periods the last thing I would say which I haven't really been fully able to implement but I'm still reading around is cycle syncing um I will link some books down below but basically cycle syncing is exercising and eating certain foods at certain times of the month in order to uh age your reproductive health obviously this can get quite techie and <laughs> in techie I mean like if you've got an eating disorder we I feel like managing what you eat at specific types like times of the month and being very like nitty gritty down to the level of how much you eat and what you eat can have a negative impact on your like mental health um it's not like a diet it's just being mindful of what you eat and what what stage of your cycle you're in because at certain times of the month obviously females we've got loads of hormones and at certain times of the month we've got like high estrogen levels or higher progesterone levels and the exercise that you can do like you might be stronger at some times of the month weaker at some times of the month it might benefit you to go for a slow walk or do some yoga whilst you're in a period instead of doing a hit session so that's what cycle syncing is i will link some books down below i'm still reading up about it and trying to get my head around it but I would say those are definitely the four things that have helped to make this journey of periods and just being a woman easier to navigate. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you find it helpful, subscribe. <laughs> I was going to say, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss my videos. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.